Another team that is taking care of business one week at a time and had its signature victory on Sunday, the Cincinnati Bengals, going into Baltimore, a place where they lost, coincidentally, 27-3 to last year, early in Joe Burrow's career, about a month or so before he had the serious knee injury. This time around, the Ravens, who seem to be, Mike, slipping into domination mode. They win those close games. They get a boost. They take care of the charges. You made the great point last week about how Justin Herbert was confused. The Ravens changing everything up. They saw stuff they'd never seen on film. The Bengals out ravened the Ravens yesterday because they went into Baltimore and they confused and confounded them. And it, it, I look at 41 17. It's like, ah, no, no, 17 14. They flipped that around. It said, no, the Ravens won. No, this doesn't happen. It happened. You, we're so used to the Bengals being the Bungles or whatever other right. derisive name you want to use for them. It's like, just like it's a hard time computing that the Titans are among the elite, like our brains don't want to accept Bengals Browns as a couple of the best teams in the conference. But the Bengals right now, five and two, first place in that division. Who would have thought they'd be in first place in that division ever this season? Oh, no, I, w without question. And, and a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, I did their Thursday night game with Jacksonville before the, you know, the infamous uh, Urban Meyer situation. But Jacksonville uh, was up 14 to nothing at halftime at that game in Cincinnati. And the Cincinnati fans were booing this Bengal team, which had been playing well early in the year, you know, off the field. And I'm up there thinking, is this the same old Bengals? They start to show a flash, and then now they're going to get get thumped by a team that hasn't won a game in Jacksonville. And Cincinnati came out, and they, they had four possessions in the second half. They scored on every possession, including a game-winning field goal. And I thought, okay, you know, that's a confidence level there of being down and coming back. Cincinnati Bengal teams wouldn't do that. They would find a way to blow it or find a way to have a lead and lose it or be, be, uh, be at a deficit and not be able to come back. And I, that was the night I was like, okay, I know it was Jacksonville. You know, I'm not putting too much into it, but it was more about Cincinnati being able to come back and what they're building. You know, what they have is some young guys who don't care about the past, Mike. They don't care. You know, you sit there and, and Bengal fans – can, you know, chapter and verse about how bad their teams have been and trying to build the teams and how bad it's been. But these young players, they don't care. They weren't there. Hell, they weren't even born when a lot of it was going on. You know, so the Joe Burrows and Jamar Chases of the world are like, you know, it's a new era, gang. We got a great, you know, young team here. Let's build on it with a young coach as well. So who are who are don't care at all about the past and are building it now. So they're they're a fun team to watch to watch. And Burrow and Chase Oh, my gosh. I mean, picking up right where they left off, you know, from their, their national championship year in LSU. They, they are a lot of fun to watch. You know, I had a choice to make last night between Jamar Chase and C.J. Uzama to speak to after the game. And I had spoken to Chase already this year, and he's having a phenomenal season. He may be on track to be the NFL's offensive rookie of the year. But Uzama's been there since 2015. He's been through some crap. He was there for the low water mark that allowed them to get Joe Burrow. So I wanted to hear from him. And he told me that he was feeling emotional on the sideline. And, and the team is so tight-knit. And they're rising together. And they're fighting through adversity. And they're discovering who they are. And he is amazed by what Burrow is. Joe Burrow is just incredible. I mean, he, it's, it's hard to stand out the way he did at LSU when you've got so many great quarterbacks in the NFL. But he's starting to, and I think people are starting to notice. And uh, now, now we see how they deal with the mantle of expectations, right? That, that once people start overlooking you, do you take it to the next level or do you start to coast? I, I think the Bengals are going to not get complacent and they're going to keep going. And they get fueled by what they did yesterday. And they believe in themselves even more. You know, and, and we keep talking about, obviously, the young stars on offense, which we should because they're doing so well. Oh, by the way, this is a top 10 defense. Statistically, they're a top 10 defense. They're holding teams to, I think, about 94 yards rushing a game. And in the key stat, while they're scoring just under 28 points a game, they're only giving up a little over 18 points. You know, the bottom line is the final score. And their defense is, is holding teams in the teens while being especially really good against the run. So it's not just about 
the stars on offense. You know, it's about a, an improving defense as well. This is definitely uh, a different Cincinnati team of what they're building. That's the beauty of this, Mike, is – it's not a team that brought in, like, aging veterans to try and hit it for a year, right, and try and get back and try and, and be that team for a year and then have to deal with salary cap issues and free agents leaving and trying to get more to fill their spots. This is a team being built, you know, certainly some by free agency, but by the draft and using that as the foundation of, and youth and hanging on to those guys. How many teams do we see? drafting top players, and then a few years later, you start to already roll over on those players. Well, here for the Bengals, this is another chance, and it looks like they have a solid group that they can build upon, not continue to roll over. And there was so much debate over whether they should take Penny Sewell or Jamar Chase with that fifth overall pick. And Joe Burrow <laughs> kind of remained neutral on it. He wasn't stumping for his former college teammate the way that maybe others have. Uh, Because he understands they need some help protecting him after what happened last year, but they made the right call. Jamar Chase had 201 receiving yards on eight catches yesterday in that long catch and run, and he's spectacular. Burrow is. The team is looking great. Let's hear from Zach Taylor, the head coach of the Bengals, who entered the season on the hot seat. That seat has cooled off considerably. Here he is on beating the Ravens for the first time since 2018. It's a different team. You know, you're, you're allowed to build and improve. And, um, you know, we just have a different mentality right now. We built, you know, we endured a lot of things that put us in this position. Make no mistake about that. I, I told the team I've given a lot of really tough speeches standing where I just stood in that locker room about great things to come and keep working. And you're just you, you hope and pray that the team believes in that because the foundation we're building. Uh, but this is the this is that moment where they know this is everything we've talked about. Um, we've earned. You know, and, and we're starting to earn respect. We have a long ways to go. You know, just winning one road game against a visual opponent, um, that's what you have to do if you want to compete in this league. Uh, we've got a long way to go, but I'm really proud of the collective team effort. I mean, this, this was a complete game today by all three phases, and that's where we're going to need to come on the road and beat Baltimore. It really is amazing to consider where they are right now after Joe Burrow has the very, very bad knee injury last November against Washington. No reason to think he was going to be ready to go week one. There was talk about whether or not he felt comfortable. You know, the idea that that left knee's exposed out there when you're in the pocket. And Zach Taylor, the rumors were so rampant about him being out after last season, the team actually issued a statement on Black Monday to say, we're not firing Zach Taylor. I don't remember when that's ever happened. The statement that usually yeah. is issued the day after the season ends is, see you later, head coach. And to see what they've done working through the adversity, incorporating Jamar Chase, who worked through his adversity in the preseason when he couldn't catch yeah. anything, unbelievable. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if they can keep climbing. They got the Jets coming up, the Browns week nine, Ohio showdown, then a bye week. Not a lot of games that when you look at their schedule, you say, wow, uh, but uh, though there are some tests, and we'll see if they can keep it going. But so far, so good. Well, Five and two in the top well, of the division. The, yeah, there are tests, but we, we still have that in the back of our heads, don't we, Mike? It's the Bengals. And will they find a way to screw it up? You know, and it was such a nice game yesterday, even though Lamar Jackson still ran, I think, what, 12 times for like 88 yards in this one. I mean, he's still incredible to watch. But what this team did overall – and you heard Zach Taylor talk about the moment. That was the moment. And there's moments within the game. And to me, there was a moment right at the end of the half where the half's running down and they go on a 63-yard drive and they get a field goal as, a half, as it's getting close to halftime to go up 13-10. to 10. That, to me, is one of those moments of, okay, you know, we have a chance here, you know, to go down to, to, to make a little bit of a statement here and get some points right before halftime. To me, that was a, that was a moment in the game that – you don't see out of Cincinnati where I do think the tide is starting to turn. Now, not to think that they won't have their bad moments. All teams do. But they're having more good moments now than bad moments. And what that does is that builds confidence for them to say, all right, we got a little bit of time left in the half. Let's, let's head down the field. They get themselves a, th- a three-point lead going into halftime. And uh, to me, that, that's, again, one of those kind of eyebrow, like, oh, okay. You know, you don't normally see this out of Cincinnati because that's what we do. We compare it to what we've seen out of a franchise, and it hasn't been pretty out of them. So when they have those little moments like that, I really take that to heart and say, okay, you know, maybe we're seeing a heck of a shift going on with the Bengals. It's the mirror image of the Chiefs. With the Bengals, we can't shake their past of stinking. 
And with the Chiefs, we can't <laughs> shake their past of greatness. And and they collide late in the season. The, and, and the Chiefs may be very, very desperate when they get together late in the season uh, as the Bengals are trying to nail down whatever it is they're trying to nail down, whether it's the division title, whether it's, uh, God forbid, the one seed. Could you imagine the – of all the great teams in the AFC entering <laughs> – the season if the Bengals are in just in contention for the one seed not if they get it but just in contention that will be mind-boggling now the Ravens look like they were ready to take control of the conference after the Bills lost last week and the Ravens had that big win over the Chargers who previously had one loss they go into their bye week and they got to pick up some pieces and you know they they got to figure out what happened to them yesterday because because like I said they'd been as you pointed out last week very good at confounding the opponents They got confused yesterday by what the Bengals did. So they got 13 days now in the lab until they play again. They better figure some things out. And I tell you what, they also better do. They better get Lamar Jackson paid. You know, if he's too busy representing himself during football season to get something done, here's your break. Spend the next three or four days getting this guy the contract he deserves, Mike. Uh, Listen, Mike, I could not agree more. Get that thing done. Get it done, put it in the rearview mirror, get past it so we're not worrying about it going forward. And, and as a player, I'm sure he said he's not worrying about it right now. He's just worrying about playing. But listen, you do, because one of the important things about signing that big deal is going to be what would be health, though we did see Dak get the big deal after getting an injury as well. But that's the big thing you hold your breath for. People in Lamar's circle or family is, man, you don't, you don't want to see a situation. You never want to see it. But when that money is on the line, which he should still get anyway, I'm with you. Uh, take care of that thing uh, during the bye week. But but this division now, in all honesty, Mike, is turning it in to one of the more competitive divisions. We kept talking about the NFC West, and we see Seattle, you know, falling off obviously without you know a, a guy like Russell Wilson. Uh, and, and but in the in the a, in the AFC North, what's happening? I did the Cleveland Denver game, and I mean Cleveland basically doesn't have anybody left. They're all injured, and they pull out a win, albeit over not a great Denver game, but. That was a game where you bring in a backup quarterback in Case Keenum, and his job is to keep your team's head above water. And that's what he helped uh, do with Darius Johnson, a third-string running back who goes off, you know, and has an incredible day. That's picking up the slack when you have guys injured. So they're right there as they get ready to start division play as well. So they're going to be right in the mix. So between those three teams, Baltimore, Cincinnati, and Cleveland, I think it's going to be one heck of a race for the division. And obviously there's an extra team in the playoffs as well. Well, so you know who knows where there's wild, where the wild cards one or two could go. Could be that division. Well, and they're the only division right now, the AFC North, with all four teams at or above 500. And it's not going to happen anytime soon. Theoretically, it's possible. We've seen in the past when there are only two wild cards, three teams go to the playoffs in one division. In theory, you could have all four teams from one division get in now because yeah. there's three wild cards. Yeah. That would really that would really take some bad teams in the yeah. other three divisions in your conference yeah, for it to happen. Yeah, it but they're all alive right now. And the Steelers and the Browns get together this weekend, and the Browns and the Bengals get together next weekend. So there's going to be some cannibalization. There's going to be some opportunities mm, right. for some of those teams to get at or below 500. But the, it's just I, I'm stunned that the Bengals are in first place. I expected the Ravens to be good, the Browns, the Steelers. I didn't think it was going to work. They've won two in a row. Exciting division. And the weather's going to start to turn. There's going to be some fun football coming up. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.